Ryan Blaney finally wins this season, becoming the 10th different winner of 2024, putting some pressure on some guys above the cut line with only nine races remaining to the playoffs. Let's talk about everything that just took place in NASCAR's inaugural race in Iowa. Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert and let's talk about NASCAR's first race out in Iowa in the Midwest where Ryan Blaney is able to capture his first win of the 2024 season. His third win actually at Iowa if you count all three series. He's won now in the trucks, Xfinity and Cup. That puts a little bit of pressure on some guys above the playoff grid and some big name drivers remain below the playoff grid. We'll break down the playoffs. We'll look at the top 10. We'll talk about Kyle Larson's incident in the middle of this race as well. Let's break down everything that happened at a, I would say, a very solid race out in Iowa. This was the first time we ever went to this racetrack. Uh, NASCAR paved the, the, the turns. We were told they were going to patch the track up a little bit. They actually did a full repave and some of the preferred grooves at the bottom half of the turns uh, at this racetrack. And, you know, a lot of fans were skeptical. A lot of drivers were skeptical about this decision, but it turned out to really help with passing. We saw, you know, two and three wide around this racetrack all, all night long. It was really exciting to watch, really fun to watch. A lot of different lanes you could choose and move around on. So props to NASCAR car for, for one coming to this racetrack and, and props to the fans for showing out because that's always you know a big deal when you go to a new a new facility the Iowa fans came they showed out and they were there for not only the cup race they were there all weekend you know Friday and then of course last uh, last night yesterday for the Xfinity series race as well so really like this racetrack hopefully it makes a comeback if I had to look at the short tracks we currently have on the schedule you know taking out New Hampshire because that's not technically a short track but I would say that tonight was maybe one of the best short track races we've seen in this next gen era since 2022 uh, certainly i would say it was it was more solid than the martinsville races we've had you know bristol earlier this year was was a solid race too but this is a really entertaining short track race which we just haven't seen with this new generation seven race car yet uh but, but we saw that tonight which was certainly exciting with the tire wear the, the the preferred grooves being you know different places there were multiple grooves you could run uh, and it was certainly exciting but in the end it was ryan blaney conquering the iowa cornfields out tonight and of course that's his first win since his championship run last year at Martinsville. He ultimately did not win the race in Phoenix when he won the championship, but won the race before that at Martinsville. Uh, and Ryan Blaney finally got back to victory lane tonight. And this is a huge win for Ryan Blaney because I know that Ryan Blaney has winning speed, right? I mean, we saw it a few weeks ago at Gateway where he'd run out of gas coming to the white flag. Certainly some unfortunate situations there, but this shows that Ryan Blaney is still, you know, in winning form. You know, we go back to 2022, Ryan Blaney goes winless, really frustrating season. Uh, barely makes it in the playoffs that year. Then you go back the very next year, 2023, Ryan Blaney, we had early in the year, I think it was Kyle Petty. Some other people were sort of talking about this midweek uh, story where Ryan Blaney hasn't reached his full potential. He's sort of like a Casey Kane, you know, not quite getting to championship form. And, and I even talked about it on this show, Ryan Blaney at that time, last year, at this time, I was saying that Blaney was not championship form, not a championship driver at that time. And, it, you know, you, there's a few things you could do to back that up, but Blaney proved me wrong and proved everybody wrong because he went out there won last year's championship, peaked at the right time in the playoffs, and was able to advance to the Final Four, get the championship, which is, if I look at it right now, I don't see any reason why Ryan Blaney can't do the same thing. He's been just solid enough all year to get decent results. He was probably going to make the playoffs on points if he didn't get the win, but ultimately got the win. I think he's a real threat to go and run for this championship. And just a shot of momentum, a boost of momentum for Ryan Blaney, and a win in Iowa is a big deal for him, and it's going to be exciting to see what he does moving forward. I do want to mention that this is the third time he's won here. We go back to 2012 in the Truck Series race. Uh, I believe this race was back on Speed Channel. This is before I was even watching NASCAR. Uh, I was at a really young age for sure. Ryan Blaney was able to win here in 2012 in the trucks. He was able to win here in the Xfinity Series in 2015. And then you fast forward almost 10 years after that first truck, over 10 years after that first truck win, uh, Ryan Blaney wins in Iowa. So Ryan Blaney has won in the trucks. Xfinity and now Cup Series at Iowa. So just wanted to throw that out there. That's exciting for him as well. I do have my big three drivers of the day, and I'm going to go with Blaney, obviously, because he was the winner. William Byron was solid today as well, was the best driver at the end. Uh, Ryan Blaney was on older tires. William Byron was on fresh four tires. He still couldn't catch Blaney, but if I look at everything that took place tonight, William Byron was solid all night in the top five all night long. So I'll put William Byron in that second place spot for fastest driver. William Byron, obviously, has been very consistent this season. He's had a bit of a rough stretch the last few 
few weeks, but he's been consistent for the most part all season long. Just trying to string together better finishes is what William Byron talked about in his post-race interview, and I see that coming. And certainly a second-place finish tonight is a good stretch. Uh, and William Byron's had trouble in the past. Really every season we look at with being really strong at the beginning of the year and fading somewhat throughout the middle of the season. So it'll be interesting to see if he can pick it back up, kind of like he did a year ago. But Ryan Blaney always is stronger at the beginning of a NASCAR season than he is at the finish. If we look at really his entire you know history it, it, with what he's done in the Cup Series, I'm not saying it's bad in the second half, but the first half of the year is usually better than the second half of the year if you look at William Byron's, uh, at least on the stat sheet. So I want to throw that out there. And then, of course, Kyle Larson, the incident that happened midway through this race. I believe it was about 220 out of the 350-lap race. Kyle Larson was the fastest car all day long. I put in the back because of a tire issue midway through the race or in the earlier portions in the race. Uh, and unfortunately, was coming back through traffic when he got caught up in an incident. Uh, uh, and unfortunately, Daniel Suarez, Kyle Larson got caught up in a wreck here, taking Larson essentially out of the race. I think he run a couple laps after that, but ultimately DNF'd, finished in the 30, 34th position. And it's unfortunate for Kyle Larson because he was the fastest car in another race that he has not won. And if I look at drivers that have cost themselves a few races or not even cost themselves, races that got away, at least in the last three or four years, I really point to Kyle Larson. You know, if I go back to the Gen 6 era, I point to Martin Trex Jr. and, and, and Kyle Busch. If I go to the, the Gen 7 era, the next gen cars, I go to Kyle Larson and Martin Trex Jr. because there's a lot of races those guys should have, could have won that they didn't win. Let's go through the entire top 10 here. I talked about Blaney, talked about Ryder, and Chase Elliott is now your regular season champion with the finish tonight. Obviously, Kyle Larson was leading going into tonight, had the incident early, uh, and unfortunately uh, for him, Chase Elliott is now the regular season uh, points leader, which obviously pays big dividends. You know, more bonus points going into the playoffs, a big advantage going into the playoffs. Almost every time we see that driver that wins the regular season championship with that advantage goes, well, at least to the round of eight. And most of the time we see him go to the championship four. And sometimes, you know, you know and maybe, maybe last time it happened was 2021 with Larson, but goes on to win the championship. So certainly want to keep an eye on Chase Elliott as well, who has, according to NBC, has not finished, I'll have to go back and check, has not finished outside the top 20 all season long. That's really impressive. You go to Daytona 500s, you go to Atlanta, Talladega, those crazy style races, road courses, uh, and, and, and intermediate tracks and short tracks like tonight to finish in the top 20 is very solid and very impressive for Chase Elliott. If I look at the playoffs, it is more diverse this year in, in the playoffs than ever. Chase Elliott is leading the points with a very wild and chaotic schedule, and Chase Elliott's solid every type of racetrack. So certainly, uh, potentially, maybe my championship favorite right now, if you just ask me, even though he's only got the one win in Texas. Christopher Bell, another solid run for him. We talked about how, you know, the month of May, uh, early June was a bit rough for him. Then, you know, of course, got the Coca-Cola 600 win. He's sort of been back on track ever since then, finishing in the top. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., really solid run for him. It's been a rare, very, very rough season for that 47 Chevrolet team. They were able to turn it around tonight. They've been a little stronger on the on the short tracks this year than they have been on the intermediates. Not they haven't been strong on the short tracks until tonight, but certainly uh, trying to use a little bit of strategy, gaining some track position, a fifth place finish, a top five for that team uh, is very needed and a big shot of momentum for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Uh, Joey Logano in the in the 22 Ford, once again, he's trying to make it in the playoffs. It's been a awful season for him for for his standards for the two-time champion uh and his standards have not been met this season at all but he's fast on the short tracks you go back to you know north wilkesboro won at north wilkesboro you know using track position to his advantage won the all-star race at north wilkesboro that's not a points race uh, so that doesn't put him in playoff contention but i'm concerned for logano because if i look at the schedule for the rest of the year currently he's sitting six points out but if i look at the schedule for the rest of the year we have new hampshire next week which sort of drives like a short track so that could potentially advantage the 20 team but then the only other short track we have in those nine races is richmond and that is the only other race so i can look at brickyard 400 we look at pocono i don't know if joey logano is going to have top 20 speed at those racetracks which is a concern i'm not saying he won't but if i've seen what just looking at what we've seen so far this season i'm not really expecting it so joey logano there's a real concern there josh berry a nice top 10 finish for him he's been getting a few top 10s as the season continues to move on they haven't given up on their season yet right they're they're you know sort of trying to put themselves out there him rodney children's trying to get the best finishes they can do so they can find a place uh, to race next season with their team going out of business uh, alex bowman another solid top 10 finish for him he finishes in the top 10 almost every time i go through this list sometimes it's not the top three not not the top five, but he's sort of just consistently in the top 10, uh, but not competing for wins yet. So once again, I, I'm going to keep saying this till it happens. We'll see if Bowman can get over that hump, get back into victory lane. The only 
Hendrick driver that has not won a race uh, in the, in 2024, by the way. And he hasn't won in a while. He hasn't won since 2022 at the beginning of the year when he took it from Kyle Busch in Las Vegas. I think it was like the third race that year. So it's been a while for Bowman. Uh, you have Daniel Suarez, a nice top 10 finish for him. Rough year for him. Like He was kind of one of those drivers that got that win early in the season at Atlanta, sort of looking back. That's kind of a, a bit of a fluky situation, you know, a plate-style track, drafting-style track. Daniel Suarez was able to turn that, that season around tonight, finish ninth. That's only his third top 10 all year, and it's just been a rough season for that 99 track house team. They've not been competing near as good as Ross Chastain has been in the one car, and it's just been a rough stretch. A few wrecks, a couple of DNFs, and just not having raw speed either. So it's been rough for Daniel Suarez. as a nice turnaround tonight for a ninth place finish for him. Brad Kozlowski in the RFK Ford was able to finish in the sixth position. His teammate was actually involved in a lot of trouble tonight, Chris Buescher, and he's you know he's trying to make the playoffs as well uh, to talk about that, but certainly a bit rough for Brad Kozlowski's teammates. Let's look at that playoff grid, because I was just talking about it, right? You have Kyle Larson, Hamlin, Byron, your three-time winners this year. Bell, the only driver with two wins, but now we have a lot of one-time winners right now, especially if you're comparing this to a year ago. That leaves only six spots open for the playoffs, and you see some big names outside. I see Joey Logano, six points out. I see Kyle Busch, who had a really rough night tonight, 31 points out. Kyle Busch was actually having a very solid run tonight, was in the top 10, but unfortunately got caught up in some trouble. Kyle Busch has had a rough couple of weeks now. You go back to, you know, three weeks ago in Gateway, where he's got a top 10 car, gets caught up in a wreck with Kyle Larson. You go back to last week when he had a top five run going, uh, got caught up in a wreck with Ross Chastain taking him out on the final lap. Then you go back to tonight, a mechanical failure takes him out of the top 10, potential top five run for Kyle Busch. It's been a really frustrating three weeks. The only good sign, you know, the, the light at the end of the tunnel for Bush is it's not really a speed problem at this point of the season, but the, the big concern is it's a different issue every week, right? I mean, at the beginning of the year, you go back to Daytona, Atlanta, Las Vegas, he lost points because of, you know, the pit crew, you know, costing him points, stage points, and, and a, a solid finish. Then you go to, to Phoenix and some of the shorter ovals we've been to. It's a speed problem. Then you have the flat tire at Bristol. You have the mechanical failure tonight in Iowa, the two wrecks the prior two weeks at Sonoma and at Gate way. It's something different, and that's harder to fix, right? So so certainly got to keep an eye on Kyle Busch. It's looking rough right now, and you know, with Bubba Wallace being six points in, Chase Briscoe, by the way, had an awful night as well, 44 points below the cut line. Been been a rough few weeks for him as well. We'll have to see if he can turn that around, which I believe he can with what I've seen out of his team, but, but you have guys like Chris Buescher, Bubba Wallace that haven't got a win yet this season. You have to remember, somebody below that cut line, you know, Todd Gilliland, who's been fast at plate tracks, at super speedway style tracks, if they get a win uh, at Daytona, which is, you know, that race comes before we start the playoffs, that moves the cut line up. So have to keep that in mind as well. Still a lot can happen in the next nine races. We have a few strategic type racetracks, you know, Pocono, New Hampshire, uh, Indianapolis, the Brickyard 400 coming back. And then we, we still have that wild card at Daytona in the back of everybody's pocket as well. So certainly it should be interesting moving forward. But that's it. That's really all there is to talk about following NASCAR's inaugural race at Iowa. Uh, and of course, like and subscribe if you like the video and please share the video if you can. I do appreciate it. And of course, about Kyle Busch having a, a mechanical failure tonight, uh, let's get rowdy.